Have you heard Jesus is coming back for his bride? And the spirit and the bride say, come. Read Revelation 22, 17. And who's the bride? Read Ephesians 5, 27. Visit the website now. And the spirit and the bride say, come.org. Mail correspondence to And the spirit and the bride say, come. P.O. Box 210, Stone Mountain, Georgia, 30086. Or send an email to info at And the spirit and the bride say, come.org. Praise God, praise God, praise God, and welcome once again, my friend, to our broadcast today. We thank the Lord for this opportunity, and we thank you for tuning in and being with us. I'm your broadcast announcer, Elder David Morris, and our broadcast still, and the spirit and the bride say come. We always like to begin our broadcast with a prayer. Would you bow your head with us as we go before the throne of grace? Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that you allowed us to come before your people with your word. We pray that you be in the broadcast, that you would bless today. Someone may be healed, saved, and delivered through your word. We believe it. We claim it done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank you, Jesus. Well, my friend, we're back once again, announcing that Jesus is on his way back for his bride. Not a fiancé, not a girlfriend, and not a social partner but he's on his way back for his church without a spot and a wrinkle. Our broadcast is entitled today, The Bride of Christ, Don't Let the Devil Ride. The Bride of Christ, Don't Let the Devil Ride. Because if you let him ride, then sooner or later, he's going to want to drive. Absolutely positively, no doubt about it. If you let the devil ride, he's going to want to drive. You see, the devil have never been satisfied with just riding in the passenger seat. Never have he been satisfied with that. When we consider his background, he even tried to drive in heaven. Oh, yes, he did, my friend. Satan tried to take the wheel in heaven. That's why he was kicked out and wind up down here. Now, if he tried that in heaven, you know he's going to try it down here. We see his background. It has not changed. If we see the devil, glory to God, standing on the side of the street with his thumb pointed up, We should do one thing, my friend. We should keep on down the road. Do not stop for him. Do not let him ride. Because if we do, he's going to want to drive. When I look back over my life, I see there was times I was headed down the right road. But I made a major mistake when I stopped and let the devil take the wheel. And immediately, I was in the passenger seat and he was driving the car of my life. Don't let the devil ride, my friend. And I asked myself, how could this happen when this is my car, my life? How can I wind up in the passenger seat and Satan winds up under the wheel? Oh, yes. That is his intention, my friend. That's his goal, to take the wheel. And he's been doing it ever since he came down from heaven. And he's still doing it right now. Right this minute, he's doing it. All you have to do is stop. Open your door of your life and he will get in. Now he's going to get in the passenger side, but he's not going to stay there. Sooner or later, he's going to want to slide up under the wheel. Don't let him ride, my friend. Don't let the devil ride. How could it happen? I'll tell you. Have you ever heard of the saying? Have you ever heard of the saying? Birds of a feather 
flock together. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Have you heard that, that, say, that saying, birds of a feather flock together? The reason why the devil got behind my wheel of my life is because we were headed down the same road. We were headed in the same direction. That's how he achieved his goal. We were headed down the same road. I was headed down Wrong Way Boulevard. Glory to God. Have you ever heard of that saying, Wrong Way Boulevard? That's where Satan hangs out. If you want to know where he hangs out so you can avoid him, don't exit on Wrong Way Boulevard. That's his territory. You will see him standing there trying to hitch a ride. And let me tell you something, my friend. When Satan gets behind the wheel of your life, there is only one hope to get him out of that car, to get him out of that vehicle, and that's through Jesus Christ. You may call the Pope. You may call the elder, the bishop, the apostle. It's going to take Jesus to get him out of your vehicle. And from under the wheel, driving you around, taking you uptown, downtown, and wherever he wants to go. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what happened. That's exactly what happened. We may say, oh no, I have never let the devil ride. We may say that. If that is so, then the Bible tells us we wasn't born here. We were not born here. If that's so, we were not born here. Let's go to the scripture. Where did you get that from, Elder? I got it from the Bible. Listen to what it says. In Romans, the book of Romans, the third chapter and the 23rd verse. Listen to what it reads. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody that was born down here have sinned. You just heard it. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. My friend, Satan been driving, riding around for a long time. He is the author of sin from the beginning. 1 John 3 and 8. Who do we think that is sitting on the other side of our vehicle of life when we are headed down Wrong Way Boulevard? My friend, it is not the two fairy. It is Satan himself. We might, glory to God, hallelujah, we might not recognize him, but it is him setting on the other side for a period of time until he can navigate, scheme, and connive himself up under the wheel. Glory to God. Yes, that is his goal. That is what he's trying to do. And that is what he's doing right now. Yes, sir, my friend. He was a sinner from the beginning. And when we're riding down the wrong road, my friend, that is what he's doing. Trying to get under the wheel. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So how did Satan, how does he accomplish this over and over and over again. How do you get away with it? 
where the Bible tells us it's all about the appearance. You see, we don't pay attention to the appearance of things as much as we should. We wait till they materialize. But the Bible said it's under the appearance. The appearance. When we let the devil bring circumstances to us, we're waiting too long. We should pay attention to how it looks, the appearance of it. Hallelujah. Because once evil have materialized, my friend, then it might be too late to react. We must see the appearance. That's what the Bible said. You know why? For association brings about assimilation. Did you hear me? Association brings about assimilation. The flesh will attract the flesh. It gravitates toward each other. Like a magnet draws, like a moth that we see flying around, is drawn to light. You don't believe me? Go to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22. Get your Bible now. Get your Bible. And go to this scripture. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. It's in the word of God. Listen to what it says. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Did you hear that? Abstain from the appearance of evil. Don't wait to evil appear. But it is, it is something that can materialize. It is something that can spring up. It's something that has the potential to develop into evil. We must abstain from it. Glory to God. Don't wait and let him get in the vehicle and try to deal with him. Keep on down the road. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't let him drive. Don't let him get in the vehicle. He had one goal in mind, my friend, and that is to hit your ride and ultimately get under the wheel of our life and drive us uptown and downtown and all around. That's his goal. Now that's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. Hallelujah. Abstain. What does it mean? Stop. Cease. Withdraw from it. Hallelujah. The only way. The only way. To get the devil out of under the wheel of our life. Is by abstaining from evil. And the only way we can do that is through Christ Jesus. We cannot do it ourselves. He can do it. Yes. That is the reason Satan has been driving for his class ever since he hit this earth. Way back in the Garden of Eden. Glory. I feel the moving of the Holy Ghost. Way back in the Garden of Eden, he started driving Adam and Eve around the garden until he eventually drove them out into a world of sin. Don't let him ride, my friend. Don't let him get under your wheel. 
because he's going to want to drive. Oh, yes. Glory to God. He's going to want to drive. I know it from experience. Life has taught me that is his ultimate goal to drive, not to ride, but to drive. Hallelujah. There's nothing new under the sun. Absolutely nothing that's new under the sun. He tried to take the wheel from Jesus. Yes, he did. In the wilderness. Listen at what he said. Listen at it. His conversation. Jesus, I know that you are tired. I know that you haven't ate for 40 days. See, Satan is watching every move. I know you're tired. Let me take the wheel. Listen at him. I'll be glad to chauffeur you around. But it didn't work on Jesus. Jesus put the word on him. It is written. It is written through the word of God. Satan, you're not capable of driving this vehicle. No, you're not. He rebuked the devil. This is not Pharaoh's chariot. This vehicle that my father sent me from heaven. That's where it came from. Heaven, my friend. And you can't drive it. Now get behind me. You're not getting in and you're not taking a wheel. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah. Thank God for the victory. I've been through it myself, my friend. The only hope is in Jesus. He's the one. It didn't work with him. And you know what? Glory to God. You know why I feel like shouting? Because when he left the presence of Jesus, he left walking, my friend. He didn't need riding. You don't believe it? Go to Job. The book of Job, the first chapter and the seventh verse, it will tell you. Listen to this. And the Lord said unto Satan, which cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking. Glory. Time to shout now, my friend. Oh, can't take this wheel. Uh-uh. Left walking. From walking up and down in it. He didn't leave Jesus' presence riding. That let me know. The same word that was used back then is available right now. Manifested in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My friend, let me tell you something. Jesus drives or he will not ride. Jesus drive or he will not ride. Now I know that is not the philosophy of this world because man grade Jesus on the curb. But the Bible says the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. The wages of sin, my friend, is still death. No matter how man wars it down, Glory. Hallelujah. Makes it seem like Jesus is some kind of sugar daddy. That no matter what we do and how we do it, how we refuse to repent, we going anyway. It doesn't work that way, my friend. I found it out. Glory to God, I feel like getting up from here. I feel like getting up and getting me a shout. Because the word is right. Jesus said it, I believe it, I believe every word that he said. 
unless Jesus drives the vehicle our life, he won't ride. Don't let nobody fool you. He's not going to ride with the devil. He never has and never will, no matter what comes and what goes. They are enemies against each other. The flesh and the spirit is enemies against each other. They don't ride together, my friend. And if we're riding with the devil down the highway, let me tell you where I was headed. I was headed down wrong way, boulevard. That's how Satan got in my vehicle. I was headed down wrong way, boulevard. Have you ever heard of that, wrong way, boulevard? If you want to know where Satan hangs out, so you can avoid him. Don't exit on Wrong Way Boulevard. That's where you will find him with his thumb in the air trying to hit your ride. Jesus does not ride down that avenue. He rides in heavenly places no matter what the world has got to say about it. You will not find him riding down Wrong Way Boulevard. Glory to God. Jesus Christ is driving or he's not riding. And you know what, my friend? Let me tell you something. We either accept it or he don't ride. Bottom line, no compromising. Oh, no. No exception to the rules. There is no other way. The scripture says, let me tell you what the scripture says. The Bible, not man. There's no other way under heaven whereby men shall be saved other than the name of Jesus Christ. He will not ride unless he dies. No exceptions. And when Jesus drives the vehicle, it's permanently. It's permanent. When he drives, it's eternal. It's for keeps, my friend. Not sharing a ride like we share a ride. That's our invention. One drives today, and next week the other one takes the wheel. Oh, no! Not so with Jesus. He's there eternal, permanently. Or he's not there. And we have to accept that, my friend. Glory. Hey, we have to accept it. Take it or leave it. There is no exception to the rules. And you know what? We can get the devil out of our vehicle right now. Right now. If we want to. It's our choice to let the devil ride. But if we want to get him out, we can get him out right now. And that's by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Glory, I'm here to tell you, that's the only way. If you feel that and you're ready, you believe it, bow your heads with the Father God in the name of Jesus. We come before you asking you to save our soul. We're tired of the devil riding us uptown and downtown. We want him out of here. Out from under our wheel of our life. Save us. We repent. Glory to God. We confess and we believe and we claim it done in Jesus' name. My friend, there it is. Whoa, glory to God. Woo, thank you. There it is. There it is. Believe it and you shall receive it. Thank you for tuning in and being with us today. Continue to follow us. You can follow us on our Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram channel. Go to our website. Look up any spirit in the bride, say come.org. Go to the contact page and click on the links. All of our sites will come up. If you happen to go to YouTube, then be sure you subscribe to the channel. Click on the notification bell. It will enable us to keep these videos coming, my friend. We're on our way. We believe 
that we shall overcome. We shall stand on Mount Zion with the Lamb of God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity you have provided to us through the shedding of blood of your son. We're going to take advantage of it, my friend. You know why? Because the best is yet to come. We're on our way to the New Jerusalem and we're living in the blessed hope that we will meet one day. You there. Let us go to the New Jerusalem. Oh, the Spirit and the Bride say come. We will all sing a brand new song. Let us go to the New Spirit and 